Hey everyone, Josh here with another app redesign video. In this video, we're gonna be working on an app called Race Day to see if we can improve some of the usability problems they've found while also improving the overall look and feel of the UI. So without further ado, let's get started. So these are the screens that we're gonna be redesigning today. And for this to make sense, I'm gonna to have to provide a little bit of context. Race Day is an all-in-one solution for organizing races. So say you wanted to race dirt bikes, dune buggies, snowmobiles, things like that, you would probably need to organize it through something like race day. So say you wanted to race your dune buggy. So you find a local race that's coming up that looks fun and you sign up on their website. On the day of the event, you arrive and you're told to go check in at the tent. So you go and find the check-in tent and you find something like this. In the tent, there are a handful of volunteers with laptops checking in the long line of people who need to register for that day's event. So the interface we're working on is the interface used to check in those participants. So what does this tell us about context? Well, there's a few things. One, the people in the tent are usually volunteers. They're not very familiar with this interface and for some of them, it could be seeing it for the very first time. The second is speed is super important. We have a long list of people who are waiting to check in. We need to be able to find participants and check them in as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And third, these volunteers are often working in a bright tent or trailer. And so we need to make sure that this is legible and there is good contrast for all of the elements. So this is the current interface that we're gonna be working with. So the overall flow looks something like this. Say we need to find someone like John Davis. We're gonna find one of John's entries. We go here, we check that all the information is correct. We add things, save the changes, and then we check John in. After we're done with that, we go back to the registrations and we do it all again. Usability testing was performed on this and found a handful of problems with the interface. One of the first ones was name, transponder, and car number weren't used very often because people didn't seem to notice them, instead opting for the browse by letters up at the top that filtered by last name. The second one, and probably the biggest one, is this check mark. You would look at the check marks and you would think these are selection states. And that would be a reasonable guess, but you'd be wrong because what these actually represent is whether someone is checked in or not. So that's definitely something that we want to fix. And overall, we want to create more space for the table. The table is the most important thing and people are on smaller laptops often. And so we want to create more space and be able to provide more information in the table. And finally, we can just improve the overall look and feel in order to make this a little bit easier to understand and a little bit easier on the eyes. So let's get started. So we've pulled them all into Sketch and we're gonna start with our redesign. One of the first things we're going to do is just change everything over from Helvetica New to San Francisco. I'm a big fan of San Francisco on the Mac side and Calibri on the Windows side. So if we're gonna use a system fonts, I think those are the best ones to go with. Next, let's start up here at the navigation. So we notice we have a really cool orange and gray color scheme going on in the logo, but it's not really well represented when we actually look at the interface. And so throughout the design, we're gonna to look to using a new color scheme based off of the logo. Next, I think we should tackle this top right hand corner. Typically the pattern is to use this as a dropdown. So, so we're gonna use the organization name and contain all these things into a dropdown. I'm also gonna remove the icon because it's not really necessary. Next, we want to tackle this breadcrumb navigation. In talking with the team, we found it really wasn't used and it wasn't all too useful because all of that navigation was repeated on the left-hand side in the event management menu. So we're just going to get rid of it and free up some of that space. Next, let's tackle this title area. When we think about what we're seeing here, this is the name of the event and its location. Down below, we also have a menu that has event management. When we think about it, it has some redundancy here because the team rally race is the event that we're managing. So let's see if we can combine these. Let's reduce the size on both of these, add our new color palette, move this line, and let's move the entire thing up. And this gives us a ton more screen real estate. Next, let's look at cleaning up this sidebar area. These lines make this area feel very busy when it doesn't need to be, and it takes up more horizontal space than is necessary. So let's get rid of the lines and make sure this is aligned. And this is using the Font Awesome font library, but these are really heavy. So we wanna replace these with something that's a little bit lighter and more modern.
Now let's add a selection state for this. Again, we're gonna use the brand orange and we're going to add a little line here to draw more attention to it. Now let's take a look at the setup events button. We're gonna use a secondary button style here. So we're just going to use the same brand orange, just do it as an outline with a transparent background. Now I actually cheated. I have a whole bunch of button symbols in here. So we're gonna replace this with the button symbol that I've already created. Now finally, this thing down at the bottom, it's not obvious what this is, but this is actually a way to get a public link so that you can publish the list of registrants on your website. This isn't the best place for it, so we're just going to move this off to the side because we have some plans for that later. And finally, we're just going to create a divider line to pull all of this sidebar content together and separate it from the main body content. Next, let's take a look at some of these search features. In talking with the team, we found that we can combine all of these into a single field. And because we want to draw more attention to this and make it more obvious, we're going to move it up to the top. So we're going to change this to search name, transponder number, and car number because clarity is absolutely critical and we want to make sure that this is very clear what this actually does. We're not sure exactly where we're going to put that, so we're just going to leave it up here and we'll take a look at refining that later. Next, let's tackle the rest of the filters. We're first going to look at groups and divisions. Now, there isn't a super clear hierarchy here. I think part of it is this divider line in between show all and individual groups and divisions, so we can get rid of that and I don't think the nesting is quite enough. So we're actually going to bump that up. We're gonna get rid of the bootstrap blue and we're gonna use the brand orange and just lower the opacity. And we're gonna bring back in the divider line to separate the different types of filters. We're also gonna reduce the width because we don't need it quite so wide. We wanna utilize that space for the table. Now we're gonna repeat this for the registration states as well. I also like the order of the filters to follow the same order of the columns. And because we have status before groups and divisions, we're gonna move that up to the top and then we're gonna put class down at the bottom. Now, the reason why class isn't in the sidebar now is because the team found that a lot of organizations had a lot of classes and some organizations having up to 38 classes. And so they weren't really sure how to design something that had that many classes and they didn't want the sidebar to be overwhelming, so they got rid of classes. So we're gonna create the same thing. And then after five, we're gonna cap it and have a show more. This will open up a modal that has a search that has a lot more options. And it allows us to show all of the different options without making the sidebar overwhelming. So the next thing we're gonna do is move this results. It doesn't really make sense as a filter because this is really showing display options. And typically you'll find this either at the top of the table or down at the bottom. So we're gonna move it down to the bottom right hand corner and we're gonna change some of the styling to make it more in line. We're gonna fix some of this color and alignment and give it a little bit more padding. All right, next we have this problem section. Occasionally there's problems with the database and so they need to rebuild it. So rather than having all of this displayed all at the same time, we're just gonna move this up to the top. So we're gonna use a tertiary level button and we're gonna call it problems and we're gonna contain all that information in there. And finally, we need a way to clear all of the filters that are applied. So we're gonna add another secondary button called clear all filters. And we're gonna drop the opacity 50% when there's no filters applied. All right, this is looking pretty good. Now let's tackle the main content area. Since there's a few pages that look similar, we wanna make sure that people know that they're on the registrations page. So we're gonna repeat the icon and add registrations up at the top. Next, we're gonna tackle this total number of registrants. This is useful information to show how many registrants there are within the event. We're gonna revisit this later in the video, so we'll just leave this here for now. Since the search affects the number of registrants we're looking at, we're gonna move this down and make them aligned. And this gives us the opportunity to bring back the public registrations URL. So we're gonna move this back in here and we're gonna rename this and use our brand colors. All right, this is looking pretty good. So let's tackle the browse by next. So let's bump the size up a little bit and use our orange brand color. The last big thing we need to take care of is the table. So like we said earlier, we're getting rid of the check marks and we're gonna move that status over to make it more obvious. So we're gonna style the header by making it uppercase and we're gonna drop the text size a little bit and give it a little letter spacing. We're also gonna swap out the icons with something that matches the sidebar icons. It also feels like it's floating a little bit, so we're going to give it a solid background so that it frames the table a little bit better.
Creating a table row and table headers that align to each other is a little tricky and so my trick is to create symbols for both of them, put them next to each other, that way you can align each of the different rows. We also found that users were asking to be able to see the transponder number. So we're going to change this in here so that the transponder number is actually shown rather than just a check or an X. Because of the overall style that we're going for, we're going to opt for doing lines for each of the table rows rather than zebra striping. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. It's really a matter of preference and what works best for the style that you're going for. I'm also going to show you a trick that I use for generating authentic looking data for your data tables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the rows and then I'm going to go over here to this little data icon. I use a plugin called Automate Sketch. So if we look at this text file, we just see it's a whole bunch of numbers here and it's going to randomly select one for each of these rows so we can create some random looking data. Last up, we're gonna work on the status. So we're gonna create an icon that's a lot more obvious. So we have this check mark and we're going to completely spell it out and say checked in. We're gonna make it uppercase, space it out a little bit. And we're gonna add a background. We're just gonna lower opacity the same green. Round it to give it that pill feel. I actually reduce the icon just a little bit more. And there we have it. So I've actually worked ahead and I've created a few different ones. So we're gonna apply it to the table row. And then we're just gonna randomly select a few of them to make it look like random data. Swap a few to scratched. And there we go. We're gonna fix some of the alignment, some of the spacing. And we're actually going to make the browse by full width just so that it's more clickable because it's the most used option in the filters. Now we just have to fix some of this pagination. We're gonna bring in our brand orange and we're going to work on a little bit of making this more clickable and fixing some of the alignment and spacing. And it's looking pretty good. And we're gonna remove this footer because there really isn't any reason to have a footer within the app. All the terms and conditions are accepted when someone signs up. So there's no reason to display them down in the footer. We can safely get rid of that. And of course, after I had spent all that time on the pagination, I realized the results drop down over on the right hand side is bigger than this. So we have to go back and fix it. But as Bob Ross always says, happy little accidents. Now we're almost done. We're just gonna do a little bit more cleanup on the header, realizing that things are misaligned. And we probably wanna use a bar of orange to make this a little bit more apparent which page we're on. Now we're gonna add some more functionality to the table to make it a bit easier to find the registrants that we're looking for. A pattern that works really well for this is to make the categories clickable. So we have groups and divisions and classes, and by making those clickable, we can filter the table by the thing that was clicked on. So let's take one of these and show what it would look like for that to be clickable. So we're gonna turn this into a hover state, and we're gonna use a cursor icon to show what that looks like. And then for people who aren't familiar with this interface and don't know what these icons mean, we wanna make sure that they can learn what these mean. And so we're going to add a hover state to these icons and add a tooltip here that can tell new users what these are. And finally, let's give users the ability to sort the table by any column they want. So let's add an arrow icon to show how the table is currently being sorted. Now I said I would revisit the number of registrants at the top to show how that's going to work. By default, it shows the total number of registrants, but when a filter is applied, it shows the number of results for that filter. So say we filter the table to only show the Hooskers group, it would say something like 16 registrants out of 28. And that about wraps it up for part one. We covered a lot in this video today, so let's take a look back at the before and after. I hope you all enjoyed the video. In part two, I'm gonna continue with this user flow by redesigning the individual registrant page, so be sure to come back and check that out. Thanks for watching.